Hi Tacoma, welcome back to your Kindergarten TV classroom. Today is Friday, December 4th, and I'm Mrs. Oslin. As always, let's take a moment to check in with our zone. Think about what emotion you're feeling. Think about your I message. You'll remember your I message sounds like I feel hmm because hmm. And then also pay really close attention to how strongly you're feeling your emotion. Take some more think time. I'm in a model sharing my I message with Mabel. Mabel, I'm in the yellow zone today because I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Like everything, nothing's changed, but everything just feels really big to me right now. So after our kindergartners share their I messages, I think it would be smart for me to do some hand breathing. Go ahead and take a moment. Ooh, I thought Mabel was gonna jump off the table. Go ahead and take a moment to share your iMessage with your learning buddy, someone in the room with you or with me on the screen. Go ahead. Now, as I said, I think it would be smart for me to do some hand breathing right now. And if you also need to do some hand breathing, do it with me. If you don't feel like you're already in the green zone, you're good to go, this might be a good opportunity for you to practice for when you are in the yellow or blue or red zone. So let's do this together. You'll remember, we start with our hand up and we use our other finger to trace our hand. And as we move up our hand, we inhale, which means breathe in through our nose. And then as we move down our finger, we exhale, which means breathe out through our mouth. Here we go. I feel much better and focused. Now, the materials that you will need for today's lesson are your learning buddy, your whiteboard, and your marker. So go ahead and gather those materials and then come back to me ready to go. Okay, you can put your whiteboard and marker off to the side. We won't need those until the end of the lesson. You'll remember today and every day when we come together, your job is to listen, share, and read and write. You'll remember active listening posture. Do this and say this with me. Eyes watching. Ears listening. Voice quiet body still. And even though we're showing active listening posture, sometimes we still need to remind ourselves to focus. If you feel like you need that gentle reminder, put your hands up like this and use a gentle voice and say, focus self, focus. Mr. Kevin is focusing. Today, we're gonna to do some really important thinking and I'm asking you to think about two different things. You're gonna think about and learn about how readers, you and I, make connections with a text. You're also learning how some letters function to maintain relationships. So while we read today, I want you thinking about what are these books making you think or feel? And that would be a connection that you're making. We're also going to think about letters. We've been studying letters and how some purpose of letters is to maintain relationships. And I talked about this previously when I talk about how my mom writes letters to my kids to maintain relationships with them. So that's an example. And let's read some books together today to think more about that. The title of this book is With Love, Little Red Hen by Alma Flora Ada, illustrated by Leslie 
Tryon. We're not going to read this book today. We're just going to look at a front cover of a couple books and think about the title. With Love, Little Red Hen. This book is called Dear Juno. It's by Sue Young Pack, illustrated by Susan Kathleen Hartung. Noticing that the character on the cover has a letter. This book is called Dear Bear. It's by Joanna Harrison. Hmm. The Jolly Postman or Other People's Letters by Janet and Alan Allberg. I'm noticing something about all of the titles of all of these books. They all start with dear or love, or this one is talking about other people's letters. I think all of these books have in common that they all are about letters or they're books that are written in the form of a letter. How interesting. Today we're going to read this book called We Are Best Friends by Aliki. And we're going to learn about two friends and how they write letters back and forth to each other to maintain their friendship, to stay friends. And I want you thinking again about making connections with this text by thinking about what does it make you think about or what does it make you feel? We Are Best Friends by Aliki. Peter came to tell Robert the news. I am moving away, he said. You can't move away, said Robert. We are best friends. I am moving away, said Peter. What will you do without me, asked Robert. Who will you play with? We will live in a new house, said Peter. You will miss my birthday party, said Robert. I will be going to a new school, said Peter. Who will you fight with, asked Robert. Nobody fights like best friends. I will make new friends, said Peter. You can't move away, said Robert. You will miss me too much. Hmm, this is a problem. Think about how do you think Robert is feeling that his friend Peter is moving away? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy. Mabel, the pictures are telling me that Robert's mad. He's got his arms up, his cheeks are pink, his brows are furrowed, and his mouth is open. He looks angry. This also made me make a connection because I was thinking that if I had to move away from my friends here in Tacoma, I'd be really sad. Let's keep reading, thinking about our connections. What does this book make us think or feel? But Peter moved away. There was nothing to do without Peter. There was no one to play with. There was no one to share with. There was no one to fight with. Not the way best friends fight. There was no fun anymore. I'll bet Peter doesn't even remember me, said Robert. It's a good thing he's not here. I'd have to punch him one. Hello, my name is Will, said a new face. I don't like freckles, thought Robert. I used to go to another school, said Will. I don't like glasses, thought Robert. My friends are all there, said Will. I don't like silly names like Will, thought Robert. It was fun, said Will, not boring like this place. This makes me think, now I'm making a connection with this. This makes me think about how as a kid growing up, I moved quite a bit. I think I changed schools four or five times in elementary school. So think about what connections are you making? What is this story making you think or feel? 
Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what this story is making you think or feel. Mabel, like I said, the stories reminded me a lot about when I was a kid and I moved around a bit. And it's making me feel, I remember starting, when I was leaving a new school, I felt sad to be losing my friends. And at the same time, I was scared to start at a new school. You'll remember that readers grow and become stronger readers when they make connections with a text. When they think about what is it making you think or feel. A letter came for Robert. A letter from Peter. Dear Robert, I hope you still remember me. I like my new house now. I like my new school now. At first, I didn't like anything. But now I have a friend, Alex. You are my best friend, but Alex is nice. It is fun to have someone to play with again. It is not so lonely. Love, Peter. Now, how do you think Robert is feeling about this now that he's received a letter from his friend, Peter? He looks pretty excited. And I'm looking at the letter and how Peter wrote the letter to Robert to maintain their friendship, to stay friends, even though he's made a new friend and he lives far away. And I'm noticing that he used a bunch of different colors to write his letter. And I wonder if Robert really appreciated that. I'm also thinking, gosh, there's a lot of connections to be made. I'm also making a connection that Peter says his new friend, his name is Alex. And I know that Mr. Kevin's son is named Alex. So that was another connection that I made. Robert drew Peter a letter. He drew two friends building a fort. He drew them playing with their cars. He drew them riding their bikes. He wrote, if you were here, this is what we'd be doing, but you're not. Then he wrote, there is a new boy in school. He has freckles. So right here, Robert is writing to Peter about what they would be doing. He's working to write a letter to maintain his friendship with Peter. Robert saw Will by the fence. Did you lose something? He asked. I thought I saw a frog, said Will. That's funny, looking for a frog, said Robert. What's funny about it? I like frogs, said Will. I used to have a pet frog named Greeny. He'd wait for me by the pond near where I lived. He must miss me a lot. I know where there are frogs, said Robert, right in my garden. You're just saying that, said Will. I mean it, said Robert. You can see for yourself. If I had a frog in my garden, I'd share it, said Will. That's what I'm doing, said Robert. Robert and Will rode home together. They went straight into the garden. The frogs were there. One leaped under a bush and Will caught it. I'll call you Greeny the second, he said. You like me already, don't you? The frogs lay their eggs here every year, said Robert. It's almost time. My friend Peter used to come watch the tadpoles. He called them inky wiggles. He'll miss them. Why? asked Will. He moved away, said Robert. Just about the time you came. I write him letters. Then you can write about the inky wiggles, said Will. They laughed. I haven't had so much fun since I moved here, said Will. Neither have I, said Robert. Take a moment to check in with what connections you're making. What is this book making you think or feel? Take some think time. Turn and tell your learning buddy what connection you're making with this text. Mabel, this is making me think that Robert is trying really hard to make friends with Will. And I think it's because he's 
not quite as sad that Peter moved away because he's recognizing that they can maintain their relationship through letters and that it's okay for him to make new friends. Let's keep reading. Robert wrote to Peter, Dear Peter, I can't wait until summer when you come to visit. The new boy is called Will. I showed him the frogs. He had a pet one near his home, but he had to move away like you. He thinks Inky Wiggles is funny. I'll write when they hatch. Love, Robert. P.S. How is Alex? P.P.S. See you soon. Robert mailed the letter, then rode over to Will's house to play. Okay, I want you to take some think time and then you're gonna share with your learning buddy what connections you made with this text. What did it make you think or feel? Take some think time first. Turn and tell your learning buddy the connections that you made with this text. You made so many strong connections about what this book made you think or feel. That's what strong readers do, is they pay attention to what's happening in their brain and what emotion they're feeling when they're reading a text. That will help you better remember and understand what you're reading. Now I want you to think about how our characters, Robert and Peter, used letters to maintain their relationships. What did they do in their letters to stay friends? Take some think time. Now turn and tell your learning buddy what you noticed that our characters, Robert and Peter, did in their letters to maintain their relationships. Mabel, I noticed that Robert and Peter wrote back and forth to each other and they included color and pictures and they told each other what was changing in their lives, that they each had new friends, but they also were making plans to see each other again over the summer. We learned today how readers make connections with a text, and you practice doing that by stopping and thinking about what was the book making you think about, or what was it making you feel? We also learned that some letters have the purpose to maintain or keep friendships. Now, we're out of time for us to practice our writing today, but I do want you, when you're working independently today, you're gonna practice on your whiteboard all of the letters that we've learned, because we've learned quite a few, and I want you to practice writing your name in a snap. We learned that several weeks ago, and I hope you're practicing writing your name every day, making sure that you're using proper letter formations. Also, when you're doing your independent reading today, pay attention to what you're thinking about and what you're feeling and the connections that you're making with your text. And practice writing a letter. Write a letter to me, and you could send it to us here at TV Classroom. We got a letter from a first grader, Amelia, and it made us so happy and excited that Amelia is connecting with us here in our TV Classroom. So mail a letter to us, and we'll show it, and we'll put it up in our classroom, and we'll write you back. This is our email address that you can send it to us to. Also, when you're looking at your independent reading, look for all the letters and sounds that you've learned because your brain has grown so much since the beginning of the year. Kindergartners, thank you so much for reading and thinking and feeling with me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. This is your five minute break. Make sure you take the time to take care of your needs, but also gather your materials for math. You'll need your whiteboard and marker, which you should already have, your learning buddy, which you should already have, but you do need to grab your counters. Thank you so much, have a great day, and I will see you next week. Bye.
Hi, kindergartners. Welcome to Friday. Did you have a good week? Rashid, oh, you don't have Rashid. Mabel, Rashid, you are not supposed to be up here. This is kindergarten, not first grade. Oh, you wanted to come back to kindergarten? I know. You know, when I had to leave kindergarten, I wanted to come back too, but we need Mabel. Mabel helps our kindergartners with counting and things. Are you ready? You can go sit with your friends. It'll be okay. All right, friends, I'm gonna go get Mabel. Hang on. Okay. Whew, Mabel. I, okay, yep, mm-hmm. Great, that was great problem solving, you two. Okay, here we go. We have Mabel, we're good. Okay. Whew. Mabel, I, that was very kind of you to let Rashid come back to kindergarten, but remember you, you were gonna help us today because on my table in a minute, we have all these things to sort. And so I'm gonna turn you around and you're gonna help us sort, okay? All right. Sorry, kindergartners. Phew. Okay. It is number fun Friday. Today, we're gonna look at some equations and see if we can figure out the answer. Are you ready? Here we go. Hmm. What does that mean? Math is like a secret code. We have numbers and symbols, and they tell us what to do with the numbers. Yeah, this means I have one, and I'm not gonna add anything. How many do I have? Hold up one finger. Don't add any more fingers. How many fingers do you have? Yeah, one. Oh, I forgot to change to my highlighter. Hang on, friends. There we go, one. Now, what does this one mean? I have one and I have one more. What happens if I put them together? How many do I have? Two. Excellent job. Oh, I have one and I have two more. If I put them together, actually, I'm gonna go this way. It's easier to see. How many do I have? One, two, three. Excellent work, kindergartners Mabel. Aren't they doing a great job? Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go this way, yes. You know, friends, I have to go reverse and it can be hard to see. We have one and, actually, I'm gonna go this way. One and three. Let's see, there we go. How many do I have if I have one and three and I put them together? One, two, three, four. Very good. You ready? Oh, if one and three is four, if one and three is four, this is just one more. So what is one and four? Four and one more is, oh, it's five. Four and one more is five. That one's a really easy one. Okay, today we're practicing how to sort and then compare objects. Hmm. How are these sorted? Hmm. How are they sorted? What do you notice? Hmm. Well, the first ones. Hmm. What do you think? Oh, you're right. This one has no patterns on it. And this one has patterns on it. Okay, look at the next one. How are these ones sorted? Hmm. Look, look. Hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, Pebble, what was that hint? Pebble says, look really close at the colors. Okay, we're gonna look really close at the colors. Hmm, what color is in this group that's not in this group? Oh, <gasps> do you see it? I see it, kindergartners. Do you see it? All of these ones, have blue in them. Blue shirt, blue shirt, blue stripe, blue dots, blue. 
And these ones don't have any blue in them. Okay. Here we go. Mr. Kevin, we will need the sorting, the whiteboard up. And don't worry about the PowerPoint because I'm going to do it all here on the whiteboard. Okay, Mabel, I'm turning you around. Friends, we need Mabel's help. Mabel has to be able to see what we're sorting. We're gonna sort these things. What should our sorting rule be? What do you think? And we're gonna sort it into three groups. <gasps> Mabel says we could do puff balls, counters, crayons. Okay. How many puff balls are there? Friends, get your whiteboard and your pen out. You're going to write these numbers. How many puff balls are there? One, two, three. And three is six. Six. How many counters are there? Four. How many crayons are there? Five. Oh. Which group? has the greatest number in it. Circle the one that has the greatest number. How did you know six was the greatest number, Mabel? Because it has the most in it. Put a line under the number or the group that has the least or the fewest in it. Which one has the fewest? What was that, Pebble? Pebble says four because four is the smallest or the, the number that has the least amount in it. Four doesn't have enough to make partners with six or five, does it? Okay, reset your board. Let's sort these things another way. This time it doesn't have to be three. It can be whatever you're thinking. What do you think? How could we sort these things? Oh. Things that draw and things that don't. Okay. Things that draw and things that don't draw. Okay, let's count. How many things do we have that draw? Five. Very good. How many things do we have that don't draw? Well, we have these, which is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Which group has greater or more? Which group has more? Ooh, that 10 is very glary today. There we go. Which group has more? 10. If we were to partner up all these crayons, we would have a lot more non-coloring things, wouldn't we? Which group is fewer? Five. Okay, reset. Do, 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 Okay, what's another way we could sort these? We could do it by color, couldn't we? So let's do all the green things. Okay, Mabel, green, orange, yellow, blue, pink, Red. Oh, what do you notice about these groups? Okay, you want me to move the yellow over? Oh, so the blue, green, and yellow all have three in their groups. And the red, orange and pink all have two in their groups. Okay, what else do you notice? Oh, we could make this two separate groups, the ones that have three items in their color and the ones that have two. Oh, okay, very good. Let's go to our next slide, are you ready? Oh. Buttons, here they come. 
Hmm, we're gonna sort some buttons. Are you ready? What do you see? Oh, you see, huh, what do they want us to do? How are we gonna, are we sorting these buttons by size? No, are we sorting them by how many holes they have? No. Mabel, what is it? By color, how do you know it's by color? Oh, do you see the boxes with the colors around them? Okay, so let's do the first one. The first one is yellow. How many buttons are yellow? Hmm. One, two, three, four buttons are yellow. How many buttons are blue? Hmm. One, two, three, four, Five buttons are blue. How many buttons are black? Hmm. One, two, three buttons are black. How many buttons are green? One, two, three, four buttons are green. Okay. Which groups have more? Which group has the most? The yellow group, the blue group, the black group, or the green group? Which one has the most? Blue buttons, they have the most. Which one has the fewest? Hmm. What does fewest mean again? It means the one with not as many as all the other groups. Black, there's only three. Oh, and we have two groups that are equal. What colors have the same amount in them? Yellow and green. What's another way you could sort these buttons? How would you sort these buttons if you had them at home? Mabel says big and small and medium sized buttons, okay? What's another way we could sort the buttons? Pebble says the number of holes. Some of the buttons have four and some of the buttons have two. That would be great ways to sort the buttons. Okay, take a look. How did they sort these? Hmm. I want you to solve for the missing number. I'm going to give you one minute. Are you ready? Go. there? How did they sort them? By shape, look. There are four circles, six triangles, and how many squares? One, two, three squares. Which shape has the most? Which one has the most? The triangles have the most, they have six. Which one has the fewest? The squares, three. What's another way you could sort these shapes? How else could you sort them? You could do them by color, so red, yellows, and blues. How else could you do it? You could do it by size, big and small. You could do it by number of sides, number of corners. 
Excellent job, kindergartners. All right. Your homework for today is to do page 179 and 180. On the bottom of the pages are the directions for your adult at home to help you, okay? And they tell your adult what you need to do, especially on these pages that don't have anything. You're gonna be collecting objects and sorting them at your home. And then you're going to be doing the buttons just like we did, okay? Awesome. Now, let's check our learning. Did we practice how to sort and compare objects today? Did we sort a group of objects by shape, size, color, or feature? Yep. Did we count how many were in each group? Yep. Did we compare, tell how many were fewer, or tell how many more there were? We did. Kiss your brain, kindergartners. Now's the best time of the day. Don't forget, we'd love to hear from you. So down here is our email address. And we would love, love, love for you to send us an email. Or if you don't have an email, that's okay. At the end of the show is our mailing address. And you could draw us a picture or write us a letter and send it in to us, okay? All right. It's time for our affirmation. And this one's super important because you matter. You matter a lot to all the people around you. But most importantly, you need to matter to you. So it's important to remind ourselves every single week that we matter. So I'm gonna go first and then you're gonna go. Hmm. I matter. Your turn. Awesome job, kindergartners. We will see you next week, but there's no school on Monday, so we'll see you on Tuesday. Bye. Hey kids, we wanna see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.